Welcome to AFI Fest 2020 presented by Audi. I'm Eric Moore, a member of the programming team here at the festival. First, I wanna thank our festival supporters, our presenting sponsor, Audi, and our AFI members. And of course, you, our audience. We're here today with the writer directors of the film, David Charbonnier and Justin Powell. And we also have the stars of the film, uh, Lonnie Chavis, who played Bobby, and Ezra Dewey, who played Kevin. This film is so much fun and I'm so sad that we weren't able to get together in a theater to you know, watch everybody's reactions. Um, I think it would have been a great experience, but um, we know that you enjoyed it. So when I first saw this film, I was instantly impressed by how these two young people were able to deftly carry an entire film. That takes a lot of skill um, with both roles, both with the directors and the actors. And I'm so excited to talk to you all. So. Uh, thank you for joining us for uh, this Q&A about the boy behind the door. So welcome, guys. Thank, thank you for you. having me. Thank you. Um, so let's start with David and Justin. Um, so adults often don't take kids very seriously. That's the mistake that the kidnappers make in the film. Why did you choose to have this film carried by two young people? And were you nervous about relying on such young talent? Because they did amazing. Uh, I think at first we were a little bit nervous about having, uh, creating a film that was uh, anchored by, by two children. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of like, stories about how difficult it can be like production wise to, especially in something that's like dark and had a lot of like night scenes and especially like working around hours with schooling and all that stuff. Um, but as soon as we met Lonnie, met Ezra, it was like all those fears went away. Uh, they're just like, I mean, you've seen the film at this point. So they just like, they blew us away in the audition and like blew us away even more when we were on set. And uh, so kind of all those fears were immediately, oh, you know, we knew that we had such uh, strong talent on our hands and you know, they'd have absolutely no problem uh, carrying this film. You guys have made a number of projects together. Um, so how old were you when you met? Uh, what do you like about collaborating with each other? And is it ever hard to achieve consensus on set? Well, Justin and I have known each other from like a really, really young age, younger than like Lonnie and Ezra right now. Like we <laughs> met in uh, kindergarten and we grew up together, same school and Working together is kind of easy because it really is like you're working with your best friends. So we do kind of agree on a lot of the stuff. We do, you know, spend a lot of time developing a vision and we really stick to it and we really lean on each other if we have any questions. We're kind of like a check and checks and balance for each other um, whenever one of us is uncertain. And it's just great to have like such a strong support system when you are doing something so difficult, like directing a movie, um, to be able to rely on, you know, someone you really trust. I'd also say it's good to have someone on set when you don't have a lot of time where it's like, allows you to sort of divide and conquer um, difficult aspects where one of us can be talking to an actor, maybe one of us could be talking to like the production designer about like a problem and it just kind of helped keep things, I think, on track a bit, which is really important. To piggyback off of that, I, I feel like, I almost feel like the, it, it, it'd be, it's scary for me to think about it if I was doing this alone. <laughs> so it's like, I, I, in terms of like achieving consensus and, and collaborating, um, I mean, that's been like one of the great joys of this whole process is being able to work with my best friend on this and uh, like having, like they were saying, that support system um, achieving consensus, uh, we normally are really thorough in prep about just like really deciding what we want the vision to be and, uh, you know, how we want everything to, you know, turn out. So, um, like obviously, uh, you know, we can't read each other's minds exactly, even though we are normally on the same page. So like whenever, like there are times where we're just kind of both thinking like, oh, well, do we want to go this way or that way? We just have a brief discussion and then we figure it out and we're back on set and moving forward. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't seem like it takes any longer than I think it would, you know, single director in a lot of ways. It feels like it's more efficient, at least for 
our process and the way that we work. For Lonnie and Ezra, you both have done other projects. What was it like having two directors instead of one? It was, uh, it felt normal. I mean, it didn't seem crazy different. It was kind of nice having that. It was, I don't know, it, was, it just felt normal. I mean, it felt like as if I was on any other set that I'd be on. I mean, Justin and David there, they kind of work as one and they're really cool and fun to be around. So I don't think it would be really any different. For me, I mean, <laughs> it was pretty normal. I, mean, I think it was a little bit easier to have, uh, to have two helping hands to uh, give me in the right mindset of the movie because I've never really done a horror movie. This is my first horror movie and I loved it, by the way. It was really fun to shoot. But yeah, it's better. I, it, was, it was really easier to have two directors to get me in the right mindset of the whole film and what the actor would be feeling at that time because um, I, <laughs> I don't think I can relate to be um, uh, getting kidnapped. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, it was easier. So how did you um, select Lonnie and Ezra? What, what was that process like? Did you know instantly when you saw them that they were the right ones? Um, how did that go? Uh, yeah, that, that process was a lot of fun. Uh, we had an amazing casting director, Amy Lippins. And um, you know, early on, we had uh, discussions about who we wanted for uh, Bobby. We always knew that like, you know, these roles of Bobby and Kevin were really complex for children. And, um, we're going to take very specific actors. And, um, you know, she she's the one who originally brought up uh, Lonnie and Dave and I were both familiar with um, with This Is Us and we loved him, we still love him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as soon as we met him, we just kind of knew like, oh my God, yeah, this is this is perfect. Like this, this is our Bobby. There was no question about it. And in fact, um, we ended up, uh, we were originally going to go with the, film back in 2018 um, and uh, we just had a little bit of a scheduling conflict we wouldn't have been able to work with Lonnie at that time because he was going to have to go right on to This Is Us so we literally delayed the movie just to make sure we could have him on board that's how like you know certain we felt that uh, he was our Bobby and um, with Ezra we had uh, an audition process where we brought in a whole bunch of Kevins and he was brought on fairly early in terms of the Kevins. And as soon as uh, we saw him in the audition, we were just like, oh yeah, that's that's Kevin. And we we went through like, you know, uh, a bunch of other children, but the whole time, like David and I just knew like, okay, but it's Ezra. So, and then they, um, you know, they, uh, we, we had them meet and, uh, you know, had their chemistry test and then the rest is history. It was just like, oh, this is a joy. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So for Lonnie and Ezra, uh, they chose you, but you also chose them. So what drew you to these projects? What what drew you to the project? And uh, what like what Lonnie was saying is, had what was it like doing a horror film? It was it was really fun doing the horror film, but I think the thing that drew me to it was the fact that like I've never done one of these thrillers before. And I was kind of just like, I've been doing like Disney and stuff like that and Nickelodeon and auditioning for those. And then when I saw this thriller, I was like, you know, I think this would be really fun to try out and it seems really cool. So yeah, I was just really drawn to like the whole idea of like playing this character that is his life is threatened and you have to be like very scared and like really like aware of, of around you. And I was just... I don't know, it was just really new and I thought it'd be really amazing to like take part of. Yeah, I've never done a thriller or horror before. So this movie definitely challenged me a lot because I had to do a lot of screaming, a lot of kicking, a lot of, uh, a lot of crying, but it was, definitely, it was definitely a very enjoyable shoot. I mean, when I look at horror movies, I think that, uh, I think that they have really serious sets. This set was always so, so fun. Uh, the set always had a lot of love in it. Everybody did everything with love. But yeah, I mean, this is my first horror movie and I'm definitely looking to do more. Yeah, and it's, uh, I think that taking on horror thriller genre can be quite daunting. So, you know, many other filmmakers have tried to get our hearts pumping and 
make us sit on the edge of our seats. And for me, this film did all that. Um, I'm curious, what made you write this film and why did you uh, make some of those choices that were different maybe than other horror films? I'm you know, we've always been drawn to horrors and thriller, thriller movies. Um, that's like our favorite genre. We love, you know, the classic horror movies like Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street. It's kind of like where it started. And um, I don't know what kind of, and also like 90s thrillers. <laughs> um, I don't know what kind of genre we would do if like we weren't doing something that was in that space. I feel like it would be really, it'd be a much bigger challenge to do something like a comedy or just like straight up drama that could be, that could be really hard. But um, we just really love suspense, love creating, you know, tense scenarios, love ticking clocks, love like real time terror. Um, and obviously we did want to craft a story that could be, you know, executed in one location with, you know, a reasonable budget. So we were trying to think of like practical aspects as well. As we kind of delved in deeper into what uh, this, like, you know, at first it, it kind of just all came from, we want to create a suspenseful movie um, that centers on kids because we really do love kids and thrilling situations. And a lot of that kind of harkens back to our love for Jurassic Park. Um, and uh, that, you know, kind of led to us, you know, forming this around, um, around children. But uh, once we kind of got more into the research of um, child trafficking and kidnapping, like we realized like how big and serious of an issue this is kind of across uh, the country. And I mean, just last week, I think it was about a week ago, they recovered like 39 missing children in, in Georgia and much of them part of this like child trafficking uh, ring. So it kind of became really important to us to really try to uh, help shed a light on on that issue uh, through, you know, this film. And um, a lot of that also, uh, you know, there is a, a disproportionate number of uh, children of color that are affected by, um, you know, child abduction and child trafficking. And that's not covered as much in the media. So it was very important for us to, to have a child of color lead. And we were so lucky. I mean, I'm someone as talented as Lonnie that is able to carry that. Uh, and to be this heroic force throughout this movie. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's kind of uh, where part of this came from as well. Yeah, um, I think that, you know, you guys say you really, uh, that you love kids, but you put them through quite an ordeal here. <laughs> um, and so I'm actually curious for Ezra and uh, Lonnie, what was it like kind of being on set in these scenarios? I mean, obviously, you know, there's, there's uh, edits and cuts that are making it seem, you know, a little bit more like you're running and, you know, you don't get to stop for a little while, but like you're in the trunk of a car, like you had to actually be in a trunk of a car, I assume. So what was that like for you? And what was it like for people watching you on set, like your families and whatnot? Well, my mom always was, first of all, my mom was always crying. <laughs> she was always crying because she had to see me uh, struggle to get out of a trunk, you know? Uh, run away from my life, cry, but uh, shooting this, it was definitely very tricky, would you say? I remember sometimes that we thought stuff broke <laughs> because I kicked too hard, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was definitely very tricky, a lot of water, a lot of tears, <laughs> uh, yeah. What about you, Ezra? Um, on set, it was, it was not, it it was it was fun. It was really fun, and I I loved it. Um, in the situations where it got like when you had to do physical things, um, like uh, in the trunk of the car, or when I was being shocked down the stairs, um, everyone was more everyone was really caring about like our health and us not getting hurt doing these physical things. But um, I think that part of that physicality with it is just really a uh, it it helped me like figure out get in the mindset of like what I was supposed to do because um in the trunk of the car with the duct tape and the wrists and all that it was like like it helped me figure out like this is me I am kidnapped in a trunk I am trying to escape with my life it it was really fun and I I I, I 
I want to go and do that again. But it, <laughs> it was it was really fun. For uh, Justin and David, what was it like kind of creating a safe space on set, but also, you know, having to express these very dark, scary things? How did you do that? Yeah, I, I feel like that was a little uh, tricky to to balance at times because, you know, we we are really sticklers for really wanting everything to look as real as, as humanly possible. And uh, at the same time, like never wanting like a hair on Ezra Lani's head to, to get hurt. Um, so we I think we're really fortunate to just have a really great stunt coordinator, um, Dennis, who's like, he just, he made, he not only, you know, made the stunts look like incredible and, uh, and real and like actually taught Lonnie and Ezra like a lot of things for their like own stunts. You know, we had some doubles at times, but they're in there like really, you know, <laughs> getting their hands dirty with all these fights. Um, and he, he managed to make it look, you know, really real and gritty, but also everyone was having a really great time and is, you know, keeping everyone very safe. He's such a, a great stickler for safety. So that, that was, uh, that was a really great benefit to have that. Yeah, so you, you have this, uh, you know, set where you're doing very physical things, but you're also obviously creating like psychological space, like, you know, uh, the, the boys are getting into character. What were the kind of biggest surprises for, for all of you from when you first saw the script and you read the script to kind of what ended up actually getting captured on camera? Were there any kind of surprises for you, things that you didn't know were gonna happen? Did your characters change from when you read it to what you guys ended up doing on camera? Um, not really. Not really a lot. But um, the one thing that I do not, the one thing that I wasn't really sure about was um, when I was in the bedroom and I was doing some slow turnaround when the, it was kind of like darkish and there's a light on my face. And the thing with like the beach, I was kind of confused on why we were doing that. And I remember on set them talking about it. But then when I saw the movie, I was like, oh, that's why. And I thought that whole like, that cinematic was just so cool. And I thought it really popped out. It was really cool. What is it like to see yourself on screen? That must be kind of weird. It's always pretty weird for me. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's weird to see myself in a movie uh, crying. I think it's a little weird. It's always weird. <laughs> yeah. I think when I was watching myself, um, you know, I thought that it was cool and I liked, like, I liked what I was doing. But to me as like an actor, whenever I watch myself, it seems like really weird and awkward to me. And I'm like always thinking about something that I could have done better. Yeah. And I'm always just like, like, oh, why? Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, I did, I think I did a good job. And um, yeah, it's uh it's cool. It's cool seeing myself. And I'm like, yeah, I did that. Yeah, you've got this document of something that you spent a lot of time making and it's there mm -hmm. forever. That's pretty yeah. cool. Um, so what were kind of some of your biggest challenges? Like, you, you know, you said that the set was comfortable. You felt, you know, pretty uh, like you knew your characters, et cetera. What were some of the biggest challenges that you had? Let's start with uh, Lonnie and Ezra and then I wanna get David and Justin's perspective on that too probably every single bit of emotion i had to put in every single scene um yeah i had to put a lot of emotion into the character because of course he's getting kidnapped getting taken away uh just um yeah just really just all the emotion and then i would go to um mr david and mr justin for guidance <laughs> yeah it was very emotional movie. And um, yeah, I think that was the challenge. But yeah, whenever we were doing the scenes and we would act it out, Justin and David, they would come to us and they would tell us exactly what they wanted and we would just try and do it. But yeah, I was just, um, 
we, I had to take time sometimes just uh, to like really like think about what I was doing and like prepare myself like, okay, um, I am supposed to be crying right now because some creep is in this room and he's going to hurt me. And, you know, I just had to like really just like throw my old self out and just like really just kind of like empty my mind and just say like, this is what's happening and I just have to try my hardest and play off this guy and just really try to put myself in like a dark place where I can really embody this character and what's happening. And I had to think a lot about, you know, like family members being hurt, um, just really bad things to help me get into the zone. But at least it worked. And yeah, it um, it I'm glad, work. I'm glad I'm able to do those, but still like come out of the scene happy and not like depressed afterwards. Yeah, so, that's a good, that's a good point because you know, you get into such an emotional state and then you got to go home and have dinner or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what about you, uh, David and Justin? What were kind of the hardest parts of, of the film for you? Uh, I mean, well, I'll get into, I will first say like for both Lonnie and Ezra, like they just, they both wowed us with like how much they were able to like bring that emotion. Um, and just like every, it, cause it really was like every day um, they had to be completely on in a way where they were either bawling or terrified and like you're probably watching this film being like oh they must have just used a lot of fake tears like no these these kids, these kids are like crying and like really getting there like they're they're finding a way to like you know actually find these emotions and I just found that incredible <laughs> like every single time I'm like I don't know how like maybe I'm a robot but I don't know how you guys are finding <laughs> these emotions so consistently and you know over the course of the day like multiple times it's just it's really really impressive to me um and so that's just such an achievement I um I think for David and I the toughest thing was uh time uh you know when you're working with kids uh especially at night you have very limited hours to actually shoot with them because um, you know, they're there for more or less the same amount of time on set that you are, but they have to do a lot of schooling and other, they have a lot, a lot of other responsibilities on set uh, in addition to just uh, to, to actually like, you know, shooting characters, which is another testament to, you know, how great the, of a job they do. Um, so for us, you know, we, we essentially, most days we really only had like five hours to shoot with them. Um, and we had to be done by like midnight or 1230. And, you know, <laughs> like there's not a lot of, uh, you know, time to work with when it's like at night and you only have that limited amount of time and these kids are in every single frame of the movie. So, um, that was, I think our single largest challenge. Yeah. Anything to add, David, or is that pretty much sum it up? Um, I definitely agree. Time was our, was our most difficult uh, obstacle to overcome. Um, like Justin said, we were definitely lucky enough to have such, you know, two talented leads that really made it easy on us because, you know, most things we got in just like one or two takes, and that was a lifesaver. Um, and, you know, obviously we had a great support system with such a strong crew. Everyone was so talented and it was a really great environment, um, but we didn't make it easy on <laughs> ourselves with uh, kids at night. Um, but yeah, you know, we were, I think we're really happy with the, the final product. Yeah. We'll <laughs> it's a good, you know, it's a, it's a very successful in what you guys set out to do. So thank you so much for sharing the movie with our audience. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it. And uh, for everybody who's watching, there's still time for you to uh, tell your friends about the movie, have them get tickets and watch it before the festival's over. So I just wanted to thank everyone for being here today. Thank you all. And uh, tell your friends, you know, uh, we'd love to hear from you on social media as well. So we are hashtag AFI Fest. 
and join us for more great films and virtual events at fest.afi.com. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.